a, the fully automatic technique, we'll use an engine like this, okay? Same thing, we'll cut into the scalp with a similar device, similar cutting end, like this titanium punch. I don't know if they're using titanium, but at least it would be similar to this, a little bigger, a little smaller. And then what happens is the graft would actually suck through a tube at the back of this and, and fill up a filter, okay? So there's, so in other words, if I was to cut in, let's say this was the back of the scalp here, the donor area, if I cut in, I would have to wait for the suction machine to suck up that graft, okay, and there's certain suction power involved, and that power will suck the graft into the machine and through the back element into a filter chamber, okay. Now, um, that's acceptable. However, my opinion is that it is unnecessary. It does not expedite the process, and I believe it gives the surgeon less ability or uh, less control in pulling out that graft. For example, if let's say you had a fully automatic device and you're cutting in and that suction power is too strong, okay, it literally might shear off that top of the graft, okay, and destroy the graft. If the suction power is not strong enough, the graft will not suck through the tube then it would have to be taken out manually, okay? Now, how does that differ? Let's go back now and compare it to the semi-automatic. The semi-automatic, the Lexus procedure that I use, is I will cut into, let's say this is the donor, okay? I will make my cuts like this, as you can see, and I'll try and show you this way, okay? In a parallel fashion, and notice the speed. It's quite fast. If I make my cuts with the magnification that I have and the visibility, I can work that quickly and efficiently and effectively, okay? Now what I do is I do not pull out with a suction device because a suction device provides a suction pressure that does not vary. So there's no control. Now, after I, for example, with the Lexus procedure, after I would, to, let's say I make my cuts into the skin, I would simply take a very delicate, uh, let's say a, a jeweler's device, okay, like a tiny little tweezer in effect, and I could grab that graft and carefully pull that out with gentle pressure, with a little more, a little less, whatever it takes to take that graft out completely and whole without damage, you see. The hands here are much more sensitive than a suction device okay, than a vacuum device. You could feel with your fingers if you need to be patient in pulling that graft out of the skin, you see. That's why I believe that the semi-automatic or Lexus procedure, in my case here, uh, is superior in regarding at least pulling out, in that aspect, pulling out the graft carefully and safely, okay? And again, I cannot emphasize enough that a, uh, stereo, the stereoscopic element okay, of the process is critical. Because if you cannot see with your, what you're doing, if you cannot see what you're doing, if you're using something like this, okay, how can you be effective, simply? I can't explain it any different than that, okay? So now, uh, we talked about the efficiency of the Lexus procedure, the semi-automatic, when we add a device like this when we have an automation process like this, and then when we take out the graphs in a manual fashion, because these fingers have sensitivities that we could feel, okay, how to pull out that graft, okay? Um, now, in regarding expedition, obviously, the Lexus procedure has the advantage of cutting the graphs at a rapid rate because of the visibility, the LED lighting, OR lighting, and proper positioning and so forth, which we didn't talk about, but that's not as critical. But when we properly position the patient, we could take and cut those graphs, okay, expeditiously, okay, at a rapid rate with accuracy, because we have visibility. And then we could pull them out carefully, okay. Now there's another aspect I did not mention. Um, it, 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 it's, it concerns the, um, uh, scarring process, okay. 
Uh, now we know a strip method causes a scar, right? Because when you cut the skin, you get a linear scar in the back. Now keep in mind, uh, anytime you cut, the you cut the skin, I don't care if it's with a tiny needle like this, for example, let's say you're having blood drawn, right? You go to the lab and have blood drawn, they take a little needle like this, and they take blood, right? Believe it or not, you have a scar there, even though you don't see it, okay? So anytime someone cuts the scalp, and that includes when I cut the scalp with the FUEs, right? And my, I take my cutting instrument, even though it's so tiny, I, you can't even see that really. And I, anyone who cu cuts the scalp back here, there's always a scar. But the point is, it's not really visible to the eye. You'd have to magnify to see the scar. So if anyone claims that there's no scars, that's a misnomer and that's misleading. Anytime you cut the skin, there is a scar. Now the question is, can you see it? Obviously, the smaller the cut, the more difficult it is. And most likely, anyone who has blood drawn, right? And I can look at my arm, right? I've had blood drawn. I cannot see any marks. But yet, under a microscope, I'll see them. That's the point, OK? So the follicular unit extraction process, in actuality, does produce microscopic scars in the back. But we cannot say there, is no, there are no scars. OK, that's inappropriate, OK? We can say this virtually, or microscopic scars, but we cannot say no scars. And of course with the Lexus procedure or the FUE techniques, uh, there are no sutures involved either, no stitching. Okay, So we say that there are microscopic, near invisible scars, very tiny, and there are no sutures or stitches, no sutures or stitches used, like in the strip method. Okay, That's why the strip method will be ultimately uh, non-existent and extinct. And again, the reason why it's still here is because of the price differences between the strip method and the FUE. And I'm bringing that together. Okay, if you were to examine the price, uh, the price that I charge, it's near equivalent to the uh, current strip price. So I, I make it affordable for this new uh, advanced technology to the public and people that are interested in hair restoration. Um, now, in regarding healing process, uh, the, of course the FUE method is superior. All right? Remember we mentioned no suturing, right? So you don't have to come back 10, 14 days later to remove sutures. The cutting in the back is microscopic. So therefore you have little tiny cuts that are healing, which is far better than a big, large strip coming out uh, again, I don't want to belabor the point. I, I, I'd rather never ever talk about the strip method again. I'd rather talk about just the follicular unit extraction techniques. Okay, And in fact, that's what we'll do and continue with. So we talked about the manual technique where you take this instrument by hand and make the cuts. And they would then pull them out manually as well. Okay, Again, acceptable yet not as efficient, nearly as efficient or expeditious uh, then the semi-automatic, the Lexus procedure I use, which has a, an engine component to it uh, with a very small cutting device, very critical, a stereoscopic guided technique, which is rarely used in this country. Okay, I don't know if anyone in Florida or the United States uh, are using this type of technology, which I feel is far superior to glasses like these. Again, visibility is critical. Um, and we want to now discuss another issue in the recipient sites here. You know, I, I want to say that a lot of patients are very concerned about how many grafts they're getting and if they truly are getting the grafts that the doctor says they're getting. Okay, And I, I produced a video to discuss unfortunately titled, uh, you know, Hair Transplants, Lies, Fibs, and Fables, okay? And I gave eight particular points to look out for, warning signs. Uh, for example, when you're in the operating room, if people are not counting graphs, that's a problem, okay? You have to hear that. What's the, ca what's the tally or what's the count? That's especially when you're doing a strip method. However, let's again focus on the follicular unit extraction. How I go about it is this. Now, listen carefully, because this is very important. With the Lexus procedure, the first step I do 
is not extract the grafts out of the back. Now that's standard and typical, okay? What I do is first prepare the recipient site areas. I'll tell you why. It's very simple. I want to know exactly how many grafts will fit up there. For example, I would use a, I would use a recipient site uh, almost like a needle uh, that would prepare the site, and it's this device here. It actually cuts about a millimeter uh, in width, which is very tiny. I don't even know if you could see that. It's a very, very tiny little cutting instrument. And this here first I use very superficially to make the recipient site cuts. Now why do I do that? If a patient comes in, certainly I can estimate and say, oh, you'll probably need about 1,700. But if I go into the scalp and use this cutting device, of course at the proper angle and so forth, the artistic element must enter at this point. But in regarding the number that will actually fit, what I do is I make all the cuts first in the whole top of the head and say, you know what, we can actually fit 1,950 grafts. Exactly. So then, having that knowledge, having that information, I now can go to the donor area with my stereoscopically guided device here, okay? That's going to give me the super LED lighting with the magnification and visibility with the handheld engine, with the proper cutting tool at the end of that, okay? I can cut exactly 1,950 follicular units out of the back. So there is no uncertainty. There's no variability. There's no graft wasting. There's no question of exactly what we need, you see. Okay? Unfortunately, it's done the reverse. We say, okay, we need 1,700. All right, let's cut out 1,700 here. And then they start making the recipient cuts here, and they put them in. But at that point in time, if they did it in that, in that sequence, in that process, they'll say, gee, I could probably fit another 200, right? But they're not going to go back and take more. That's generally just, you pay for the 1,700, that's it. I would like to find out what the patient needs exactly, okay, to maximize his sitting in my chair. He's in my OR. I want to maximize the process. I want to maximize the procedure. I want to fit as many graphs as possible. And how could I f guess in advance? I can't. If I first go into that recipient site area and I make my incisions, okay, in an artistically balanced way, and I pack in the whole front, middle, and top, whatever needs to be done for the patient, okay, I know exactly how many graphs I need. There's no guesswork, okay? And with the guided instrumentation I have and the visibility and the lighting and the technology, now I go to the back. Now I take out exactly what the patient needs, okay? That is how that should be done, okay? How it's being done is backwards in general, okay? By giving an estimation of what I think you need, taking out what I think you need, and then cutting the top to figure out then what you need. 